Hi, I'm Brent. Today we've got a video update on the comparison between the 2 litre EJ207 out of the typical early 99 2000 model WRX and a 257 in the MY10 WRX STI. And the reason why I'm doing this video, it's a great opportunity to compare two engines of, let's see what we're talking, um, at least um, doing my maths here quickly, quite a long period of time. But this owner of this engine, we're doing a, a rebuild and we're about to ship it back down into state for his uh, track car. And um, it is a fresh rebuild using original factory uh, 207. And to quick summarize, it comes with factory pistons, forged pistons, really good quality rods. It's a good package of a basic engine crate to rebuild an early model Subaru. And this one is a 99 2000, which by the way, you can retune the factory. So you don't let anybody tell you, you can't. So let's just touch on um, the differences between technology and we'll just look at some of the really simple things. Um, and you can see the comparisons because we're talking, you know, some really good comparisons here. So um, inlet manifold and configuration, intercooler, all sit in a very similar situation. So our front of the engine is here time and belt and set up on the front, intercooler up the top, turbo down the side. So let's talk at the, let's start at the top. Intercooler, throttle body, mechanical, electronically controlled idle speed control motor. Um, not as good as current technology, but in those days was really good. These ones are prone to sooting up if you had a bit of problem with your idle speed. Um, these are some of the things you need to be aware of. On the new model engine, you'll notice there's no external idle speed control. It's electronically controlled through the ECU, which has got an electric motor in there, which electronically opens and closes the butterfly, which is down inside there. And you see that's the butterfly. And I won't show that, well, actually get my cameraman to come around because this is an interesting bit. This is a butterfly here, but this one is controlled by good old fashioned cable off the accelerator pedal. So then we talk about the inlet manifold. Big difference is the SDI is pretty, obviously crinkle paint red factory WRX is just as you see it but you'll notice it has no TGVs tumble generator valves inlet manifold goes straight down into the throat of the intake of the heads whereas if I get around the side here and show you on this one we've actually deleted it but factory standard between there and there is the TGV tumble generator valves which are effectively a choke for cold start to get the car to pass emissions on cold start it's a common modification to delete them and get rid of them these ones here the process west replacement ones which are pretty easy to replace um, so it goes into the engine and of course with the engine you get the mixture of the uh, fuel and these are the injectors now on this model engine in these days it is actually the injector sits under this cap and it is a side feed injector meaning the fuel comes into the rail and goes around the side of the injector and is then with some o-rings in there goes into the injector and down into the inlet manifold intake port and of course there's two on either side for four cylinders and you can see on this particular car we've split the left hand and right hand rails so we've got individual fuel supply because this car is a track car this was previously already modified and this is the supply line and the return line and you can see the extra fuel lines going to either side of the engine and on the front here he's got one single fuel pressure regulator but in fact on this particular engine the client has obviously du duplicated it because he's got the other fuel pressure regulator fitted on this side here normally this engine only has one so on this particular engine here, the new model Subarus run a top feed injector and it's easier to see on this side. So you see the rail sits down on the top of the injector, which sits underneath that cap and the fuel comes in through this rail here, goes down through the injector into the TGV riser and then gets directed down into the throat of the intake, man in the intake port on the heads. So of course, we then got the fuel and the mixture inside the engine. And of course, while we got inside here, we got the camshafts and we need to make a spark. And you'll notice that on this particular engine, it's got pretty typical uh, spark plug lead over the top of the spark plugs, which are down inside the uh, heads to match, because they go right down inside here and there's a tube right down the bottom. You see that goes right down inside there. And spark plugs right down the very bottom, you can see. And what makes the spark is a coil pack on the top. So this is controlled by the ECU. Now on this particular engine, it's got what they call coil over spark plugs. So this part here is individual coils, which are then bolted down over the tops of the spark plug. And these are then individually controlled by the electronic control unit or the engine ECU. So of course, we've now got the engine making 
fuel, we've got the spark to create combustion, and of course it then goes out through the exhaust. But what controls the camshafts, and on this particular newer model engine you'll notice there's two lumps on either side here, which are in reverse on that side, but you've got variable intake cam control and variable exhaust cam control which allows the camshafts to advance and retard as the engine is rotating to allow um, the car to come on boost early, gives really good throttle response. It's also part of the emissions control system. Newer model technology engines typically have variable cam control. Early model Subarus like this one, if I pulled these covers off here, you'll notice the bulge is not as big and they are non-variable cam inlet and non-variable cam exhaust. The later models after this actually come out with variable cam inlet only and then eventually it went to variable cam, inlet and exhaust. So of course, we've got all the banging and popping and everything happening inside the combustion chamber. We've got the camshafts controlling the opening and closing the valves. Of course, it then all goes out through the bottom, through the exhaust manifold. Manifolds really haven't changed too much over time, although the very early manifolds on this particular one over here, although you can't see it because it's covered by the heat shields, cast iron manifold with a metal upriser here. Early model Subarus, prior after this one had a catalytic converter in the upright, but this particular model wasn't done. And they're actually quite a good manifold on this early model Subarus because they're a cast design and got really good runners. Don't fall into the trap about thinking always replacement is a good option for modification. Uh, aftermarket exhaust manifolds in pipes, things like that are only good if you do an engine rebuild. So of course, again, goes out through the exhaust and you can see on this one, it's exposed. So it's got a flexible joint, which is factory standard, but this one, goes up into the underside of the original factory turbo and out the back here you can see this part here is the wastegate and I can't open it because it's under tension but when the car comes on boost that port inside there controls the energy coming out through the exhaust wheel inside there why, hence the reason why it's called a wastegate and this part this rod it's got a spring inside it and a diaphragm and it's controlled by pressurized um, off the inlet side of the turbo and then that is then vented and controlled by the um, wastegate control solenoid which so iso solenoid controls the amount of um, air going out of here to allow this tension to be controlled so the ECU can control your boost. On the newer model Subarus you'll notice very similar in design but of course this hose which comes off the uh, wastegate control and joins here and goes up and around and you'll notice it goes into a different location because the map sensor and some of the other electronic components on this engine are in a different location. On this model, they're all mounted on the strut tower brace. So we touched on the fact of, so what controls um, the measuring of pressure inside the inlet manifold? On this engine, you've got the map sensor, which is part of the throttle body here. And on uh, this model engine, I'm testing my memory and trying to remember where the map sensor is. I think if I remember rightly, it's on the, on the strut tower because it is um, separate to the inlet manifold. And some of the other parts are obviously very, very similar in design. So at the end of the day, a huge difference in technology, a huge difference in variation. But guess what? If you do it right, there's still a fantastic fun car. Might not be a 2.5 litre engine like this one, but in a lightweight GC body Subaru WRX and SGI, absolutely fun car to have. And here in Australia, they're still quite popular. We're talking about what now, a 17 or an 18 year old car compared to this one, which is in a newer model car, a little bit heavier and a little bit different in design. But there you have it. If you wanted to know the difference between the early model and the later model WRXs and SDIs, here's some of the data. So um, share this video around. I really hope it helped you understand more about how your engine operates and some of the typical things that are different between the two of them. And of course, uh, make some comments and subscribe to this channel. And I hope this has helped you no matter where you are in the world. But for today, on behalf of MRT Performance, my name's Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.